Now that we've had a couple of relatively long tutorials, mainly focused on getting as much theoretical working knowledge about the C1 compressor plugin, I'll move forward here and look fairly quickly at another version or instance of C1. Only this time I've got it inserted on a piano track and I'm using this version, the C1 compressor stroke gate. You'll notice immediately it takes on a larger screen footprint, and that's because it utilises the same compressor expander module as we've seen in the previous tutorials, as well as the same output module down here. Also, we see this module whereby the parameters between the compressor stroke expander and the gate stroke expander have all these featured buttons. And additionally, if you prefer to work this way, we get this graphical interface here. And then, the focus of this tutorial, we get this gate stroke expansion module. Finally, we get this EQ section down here. We won't be looking at this for this tutorial, we'll look at it later, because the focus of this tutorial is looking at the gate section. So, with that said, I'm actually going to bypass the compressor and just look at this gate stroke expansion section. Just clicking on type here allows you to vacillate between gate and expander. I'll take it back to gate whilst to talk about how it works. Now, owing to the inclusion of this gate module, we can not only cut out, or at least reduce in level, parts of our signal that we determine to be unwanted audio areas, such as phrases between vocals, or in our case, this piano track, but also, by using the gate stroke expander module, we can take those low level silent areas of the signal and effectively boost their volume level by compressing them upwards. And this has the effect of making quiet areas more noticeable because the dynamic range of those quiet parts becomes more even or limited. Now notice as we work our way down vertically with these buttons here, underneath type, we have this button marked as floor. Now, I'm going to get back to this in a moment, once I've explained how the other buttons work. First of all, I want to move down to the next two buttons, Gate Open and Gate Closed. Now, you might be wondering why we've got these two buttons. Why do we need two? Well, there are two gate threshold parameters that help to eliminate the chatter type of annoyance you can get when a single control gate parameter hovers around a quickly fluctuating threshold level. If we only had a single control, well the gate would quickly open and close, like annoying chatter, as the signal rapidly gates and opens again. So by having these two fields here, we can set up two disparate threshold levels. Now I'll just start off with this gate open parameter. This is measured in decibels, and when in gate mode, rather than expansion. Well, the input threshold here allows any signal above it to be heard. The gate opens and allows the signal to pass through. And to operate it, all you need to do is left click and drag. And as you can see, this allows us to set the threshold cut point at which any signal above it will be allowed to be heard. And within our graphical representation down here, we can also visually see where we set this threshold at. You can also adjust it by using this grab slider too or even this horizontal one below the graphical view. Now, no doubt you've noticed that using any of those two sliders, vertical or horizontal, there are actually two grab handles. And they relate to the gate open and the gate closed parameters. As we've just seen, simply adjusting the gate open like this means the gate open and the gate closed remain exactly at the same point. But if you wanted to adjust so that the open and the closed threshold levels are different, well, you could come down to the gate closed parameter here, left click and drag to a different position, a little bit lower. So in our example now, any signal passing through above minus 59.8 dB will be allowed to be heard. And once the signal drops below minus 64.7, well, it's at that point the gate closes rather than being exactly the same point, open and closed. Now, to be honest, I don't normally set these this far apart. I just normally leave maybe a decibel or so between. But of course, this is dependent on the material that you are feeding through it. Consequently, now, when we look at these two grab sliders, if we want to adjust the closed setting independent of the open setting, well, we can do because they are now separated. Of course, we see it reflect in the vertical and the horizontal sliders. 
But also, now that they are separated, if we come back up to the gate open threshold level and drag this up or down, then the disparity between the two remains the same. So you might have intentionally set it a couple of dB apart. And then you want to hunt around to the optimum threshold point at which the signal is allowed to pass through. Well, you would do it like this. Now, if you want to quickly tie them together, gate open and gate closed at exactly the same threshold point, if you come to the gate open field, double click and then type in a value. Well, as you can see, the two threshold levels are now set at minus 45 dB in our example here. If you subsequently change your mind and you want the gate to close at a different setting, well, type it in here. Double click and in this example, I'll make it minus 50 dB. OK, so that's the theory. You'll notice also we have an attack, a release and a hold field, which at first glance you would imagine they are tied together with the compressor settings. In actual fact they're not, they are independent. Although you'll notice the button in between, if you do want to tie them together, you would activate those. But in terms of our gate attack, this is calibrated in milliseconds and ranges from 0.1 millisecond up to 1 second. The release is in milliseconds again and goes from 1 millisecond up to 10 seconds. And then we have the option to hold. This is in milliseconds once more. And this allows you to adjust the duration at which the gate is guaranteed to be open. And you might want to use this to occasionally override your release setting. OK, now in a moment I'm going to play back this piano and play around with the settings so that you can see this in action. But just before I do, let me give you that information I mentioned a moment ago about the floor setting. This parameter might well become your best friend when you are using the gate and you don't want your audio track to be completely sterile. This is calibrated in decibels also and by adjusting up from what it's at at the moment, infinity. Well, we can now set the noise floor, as it's known, to allow a partial part of our signal to seep through, as it were, rather than having complete sterile silence if all of the signal was cut off by a closed gate. So even though the gate will indicate it's closed, and we would imagine our audio should be totally silent, well if we set the floor level, what we are doing is, we are allowing, and determined by us, some residual noise to still exist, so that we don't get a totally silent signal. Incidentally, this works when set to gate, but also when set to expander and set to large gain reductions. So just to finish up this information, when floor is set to infinity dB, no signal remains, we will get a total gated silence once the signal drops below our gate closed threshold. But as you increase this field, you set the noise floor level that lets some of our signal through, or rather we allow some of our signal to still exist, and therefore we don't get such a sterile cutting off of sound. By the way, if we set this above 0 dB up to 12 dB, well the signal level becomes increased at low levels, a bit like the effect of low level compression, and this would help to bring out subtle nuances of delicately played instruments. So, now that we're armed with all this knowledge about how this gate module works, I'm going to play back the track and I'm going to adjust so that you can hear it in action. Here we go.
Right, that's the C1 compressor stroke gate. In particular, we've been looking at the gate module, but we've also included the compressor now. What we haven't looked at is the EQ section below. We'll look at this next. Okay, see you in a moment then.